We live on the cutting edge of physics, material science, engineering, and nanotechnology. Because at Lockheed Martin, we're engineering a better tomorrow. Thank you very much, how are you? You guys are so fun. All right, let's get to work. Uh, we got questions to have answered, a lot of serious, look at how many people there, are. I love this. Thank you for being here. Serious question, our country right now is divided, I don't know if you know that or not, and so we're gonna handle it right here. Question is this, are you this kind of person? Or are you this kind of person? Now, no judging. You get to think about it. A or B. Tell the person next to you. I'll give you five seconds. Ready, set, go. Go, 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 go. And the answer is A. So just in case you're wondering. Now, if you did say B, that's no problem. We do have a, a small little counseling session that will happen over here. So you can kind of figure this out. Here's the sad thing for me. I don't know if you know this or not, but kids are TPing homes. Do you know this? All right, this is, this is horrible because they are doing it the wrong way. And so today we're going to fix that. For years they've been doing this. They've been, hang on, it's coming towards you. Ready? Up. Like, that's horrible. Ah, oh, see, that's horrible. Did you see that? And you're wasting and we don't want to waste. And so you know what the answer is. You go to the Marriott and get another one of these, all right? So, all right, so uh, we're using Bernoulli's principle. It looks something like this. In the privacy of your own bathroom while you're sitting there, kids, this is going to be educational. I don't know if you know that or not. You blow over the top because if you blow over the top, Daniel Bernoulli was correct. Fast moving air. Oh, stupid thing here. Look at that. Fast moving air creates an area of low pressure and it just flies off the roll. Now, I've been teaching kids in Denver how to do this for years, and the great thing is they stand in front of homes and they do this, and by the time the police show up, they're passed out and we can pick them up, so this is good. Of course you don't do that, you need a little bit more power, and kids, if your mom and dad love you, they're gonna buy you one of these, all right, so get one of these. You gotta get the Model 3000, so this is the good one, all right? So you simply, you're here like this, Oh, no. This is our first STEM challenge. Do you understand? This does not work well at all. So, to answer it, here's what you need to do. You go to Home Depot, aisle 17. You get yourself one of these. So, you got to have the paint roller. This is perfect. This goes on here like that. See, now that helps reduce the friction. That's perfect. And in the box for the leaf blower, of course, you have this piece here. So, this goes on. All right, this is perfect. And now this plugs into here and we are ready to go. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the perfect way and we're gonna need a reload, I can already tell. So your job is to throw it to me when I yell reload, you got it? Up. there's your, oh nice job, you got it? All right, get ready, because we're in this together. You ready? Here we go, a little up on the top. Nice, ah, oh, this is a good one, it's a great one. Get ready, get ready, we're gonna need a reload. We're gonna need a reload. Ready, hop, I gotta have it, here we go. Ready, hop, perfect, oh, we got it. See, the, the people, the owners of the home are not even out yet. They're going, Margaret, somebody's in our backyard. You go, I know, hey, good, good taste, really good seats now, huh? There it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Ta-da! We just gave our AV guys a heart attack because they thought they were going in the lights. This is just, this is just part of the plan. So, hey, uh, thank you so much. Part of uh, what we're talking about today is where STEM will take you. And so I want to tell you where I got to start. I started as an elementary science teacher. So graduated from the, thank you very much. Uh, graduated from the University of Colorado with a degree in biochemistry. Thought I was going to teach um, high school chemistry, but then this thing happened and it opened up with the elementary. I was there for 11 years. During that time, I got a chance to do some really, really cool things. So NBC invited me to do our first nationally syndicated program out of Denver called News for Kids. So that was fun. And then uh, after that, there have been about 1,300 or so television segments, about 1,800 videos on uh, YouTube. And uh, I guess I'm most excited about our, well, I guess I can announce it here. We're going to do season three of DIY Sci on Fox. And so that's really, really fun as well. 
Just in case you're wondering, Higginsworth is here. So wherever he is running around, Higginsworth is here, and, uh, and he is set. What I wanted to do is along the way, I've met some really, really nice people, and one of the people that you saw in the video was a wonderful lady by the name of Ellen DeGeneres. She has done more to help me promote that STEM message than anybody I could imagine, because the message is so important. So I picked some demos that I just wanted to show you from the Ellen Show, and some of my favorite ones along the way. Of course, they want things that catch on fire. And the problem with things that catch on, well, there's no problem with things that catch on fire. Problem with the producers is that you can't use like, I don't know, fun things like gasoline or any of those things. So you gotta come up with other stuff. So I wanna tell you about this right here. Take a look at this. If you take a look at the screen right here, take a look at this. It's gonna be this, uh, this stuff here called Lycopodium. Here, let me advance it for you so you can kind of see. It's called Lycopodium. Now, if you take a look at it like this, Oh, there it is. If you try to light it on fire, it doesn't catch on fire by itself. It's a spore, a club moss, but when you distribute it in the air, it's just so much better because if you distribute it in the air, every tiny little particle now is surrounded by oxygen and that's what we want. So, got to have some safety glasses and the nice thing about this is that it can't come back and catch uh, on fire in the bottle so that would be dangerous if it, the flame could come back so it looks like this so you just grab your favorite blowtorch kids don't do this at home do it at a friend's home all right so here we go this is uh see, see that's that's better that's better but when the producer said, no, 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 we want a ball of fire. We want a ball of fire. So all you have to do is re-engineer it, right? Home Depot aisle three. And now you just do this little part. So here's what happens is that this kind of goes in here like that. Never done this, but I saw it on the internet. And so this goes here. It was me. All right, so watch this. So now you squeeze. And so this is kind of what it looks like. Watch this. Oh, oh. Who wants to see it again? I do, it's my show. All right, so. so now it's up in the air and so there's no way that it can pop back. But who would have ever thought that a special effects artist would be using STEM principles, right, in what he or she does for television, which is a great way to kind of think about it. So if we hang on here, again, as soon as the particles touch the fire in there, it's a chain reaction. And part of the problem has been for flour mills, for example, they talk about flour mills catching on fire because you've got that, or a grain elevator, you've got the dust that's in the elevator and one tiny little spark will catch the entire thing on fire. But as it goes up in the air, it looks something like this. Oh, and we didn't even have the fire alarm go off yet. Nice job. And uh, so that's kind of how it looks. Ta-da, nice job. <laughs> Guys are too nice. All right, so uh, kind of that club moss that's, uh, that's sitting there. What I wanted to do is to show you the origin of some demonstrations. So there are some demonstrations along the way that you've seen, some popular demonstrations. There's always an origin and we try to acknowledge the people who kind of started those first and we build on the things that they've done. And then there's things that we want to be able to do at home. So it probably means that we should take a look at this over here and I'm gonna need a couple helpers. Would you uh, invite to the stage, I have, uh, I have Renee and I have Jeff, a nice round of applause for our two helpers. Now, uh, Renee is my lovely wife who said yes in high school when we were doing a science demo show together. I know, real nerd right here. Uh, our first little uh, date was at a uh, elementary school doing science demos. Jeff has been with me for 20 years on our demo team as well, and they're gonna be perfect for the demonstration. So let me show you kind of what that looks like. It's a demonstration if you take a look up here with hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Really, when you break that down and we take a look at it, H2O2 breaks up into water and it breaks up into oxygen. So this is the reason why it's in that bottle at home, that brown bottle, because sun will help break that down. Well, we want to break it down very, very quickly. And so if you direct your attention over here, I'll kind of show you what this whole thing looks like. So the classic was uh, called, you have maybe have heard of it, called Elephant's Toothpaste. The original was called Old Foamy, and it dates back to about the 1960s, about 1965, and the demonstrators were doing it. So here is the setup that we have to have. Unlike the hydrogen peroxide that you saw up there with the equation, that's 3%, we had to have 30%, which means that it's just a little bit bigger, all right? 
So here's what we're going to do. This goes here. So the hydrogen peroxide goes in. So if you don't mind, take the hydrogen peroxide. We really only need about 10 milliliters. So, but I thought 300 would be awesome. It's a big show. It's a big, big show. All right, a little bit of soap in each one as well, because any of that oxygen that's produced, we want to be able to capture that oxygen that's there. And we can do that in the soap. Probably should do a little swirl. Nice little swirl. And if there's anything that these two have learned, is they've learned the, uh, the rule, yes, what is it? Stand back. Yes, so dump in, stand back. That feels like a pretty good rule to me. And I'm going to go over here. I'm not doing, no, of course I'll do it. The catalyst is the last thing. It's a catalyst called potassium iodide, K-I. It's a saturated solution. Soon as it goes in, we should see that release of, uh, of oxygen, and that's where we get to stand back. Are you ready? Uh, as always, cheers. Cheers and cheers. Here we go. Three, two, one, inside. Nice job. Oh, that does look good. Oh, oh, yes. That is fantastic. Slightly carcinogenic, but fantastic, all right? So it's, understand. So look at this, it's exothermic. So look at the heat being given off here, which is fantastic. And we get to see the foam this way. Now, one of the things that we've learned is that you don't want to come up and you don't want to touch the foam. All of it hasn't decomposed. That hydrogen peroxide is still a little bit there. 30% is great to be able to do it, but notice how it came up. It comes up and then it flows out. And again, anything that's worth doing is worth overdoing, that's correct. And so that's why I direct your attention to that side of the stage. Come over here where we invite two more people on stage. Would you please welcome Karen and Carly? Here they come. Yeah, let's do that. Hello, ladies. All right. So this is a little bit different. So while you're getting that set, let me at least show you what this whole thing kind of looks like. So we're now using an Erlenmeyer flask. It's a 5,000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. On the Ellen show, they saw this and she was so nice to do it the very first time. Now here's where she scared me, is that she doesn't do rehearsal. She has somebody stand in. It's not because she doesn't want to. She wants to act like a child and she wants to be able to see it and have her reaction be the same as you would have when you're seeing it for the first time. So when we were out there together, um, I had mine, she had hers. I didn't say cheers, that's where I could have figured it out. And I watched her go like this and start to drink, but she wasn't going to and I lost my mind on camera. It's just like, no, you can't drink it. No, 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 no. So she had a little fun with me and then I decided to have a little fun with her because they wanted it to be a little bit bigger. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to use the Venturi effect. We're going to create that, and we're going to allow all of that to kind of build. Oh, yeah, have you pulled it out? We have insurance, guys, don't we? Is everything good? We good? All right. So here we go. A little bit more potassium iodide, a little bit more hydrogen peroxide, and a little bit of colorant. And if you have your camera, now would be the time. Hashtag SciFest. Got it? All right, that's yours. This is mine. Wait, wait, guys. Cheers. Cheers, 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 here we go. All right, you ready? Nice job, guys. No, I gotta get you. Okay, we gotta do it all at the same time. This one's serious, stand back. All right, you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, pour it all in. Nice job, good job. Oh, oh, nice job. So much, ta-da! Wow. Is that beautiful or what? Oh my gosh, I love that. That's, that, that's art. Which probably brings me to my next point, which I think is kind of important, is this. Now, I know there's a little debate out there. There's a debate, you see, I was teaching STEM when we used to call it science. Uh, and then there's this thing called STEM, and if you date it back, you try to find out what they were trying to do. They were really bookending, they said, technology and engineering with math and science. The original name from, I believe it was Dr. Romley, was METS, M-E-T-S. That's what they originally called it, I think in 2003. Bracketed it a little bit differently, and they called it STEM. But as I travel around the country now and I get to work with teachers all over the country, I realize that there's one more component and there's that A in the very middle called STEAM. 
It isn't amazing at 211 degrees, it's hot water. At 212 degrees, it powers a steam engine, correct? It's that one little difference. If there's any message that I could share with you in the short time that we have today, is that it's not the demonstrations. You may see other people do elephant's toothpaste or shooting uh, toilet paper in the air or any of these kinds of things. It really is the person who's communicating it because what we're trying to do is to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers. If you're a mom and a dad out there or a teacher who's out there and you've brought somebody with you, I want you to look in their eyes sometime today as you're walking through here and remind them that there's a job waiting for them that we have yet to invent, but it's there. It will be phenomenal and they just have to trust that we have to teach them to wonder, discover, explore, and ask questions. If we can do those things, we're going to be just fine. So I applaud all the teachers out there and all the parents because you are the A in STEAM. You are the artist that is inspiring this entire piece. And so as you watch, go ahead, a nice round of applause for the parents and teachers. When I graduated from college, there was no such thing as a science communicator, and now it seems like there's many science communicators, and we're all trying to say the same thing, and everything that we do is that we're trying to grow the next generation of scientists and engineers. Well, what would a science show be without a little liquid nitrogen? Can I hear it, right? A little liquid nitrogen? Here we go. So with a little bit of liquid nitrogen, let me show you what the setup is and kind of the origin of the demonstration. They wanted a kaboom but we couldn't have an explosive. And so I convinced the producers that it would be okay if we just took air and we compressed air and we made it go. Well, the safety people said, sure, compressed air. Most of the air that we breathe is nitrogen, right? About 79% of the air that we breathe is nitrogen. So this over here, of course, is our liquid nitrogen. Here's our liquid nitrogen here. As soon as it, it comes out and it touches the stage, of course we get that little cloud that's there because it's now uh, being able to take the moisture that's in the air and you're able to see that. So what we wanted to do is we want to release that energy real quickly. So I'll show you the setup you don't normally get to see. That happens here in our, um, uh, in our uh, two liter bottle. I was just thinking about it because I have this for you up here. If we kind of go back here and take a look. My fault, take a look here. I had forgotten as I was thinking about this that there was a kid, I got talking to you about steam, there was a kid friendly version of the uh, elephant's toothpaste and it just uses the materials that you can kind of find at home and we've tried to put all of that at the lab over at stevespanglerscience.com so if you go in you take a look at it that way we'll get you all of the details that you need to be able to do the kid friendly version here and the smaller version really really fun but the smaller version that's safe to be able to do at home. This is what I wanted to be able to show you was our liquid nitrogen, minus, three, uh, minus 320 degrees below zero, or 196 degrees below Celsius, and there is our liquid nitrogen here. We're gonna now put it in the bottle and contain it this way. So I'm gonna set this up here while Jeff and Carly are back here working on it. They're gonna fill those, and I'm gonna give you this, Jeff. So here's this. Excellent, yes, and we're gonna do the trash cans over here. Now we only need one. But anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That's correct. Now the next problem with this is timing. They asked us to be able to do this when you're on television very quickly. Well, we were capping off the bottle, dropping it in the trash can, and as some of the videos will show you on TV, it took sometimes two or three minutes, and there's no way that an audience will wait the two or three minutes. So we had to find a way to accelerate it just a little bit. And so hiding down in the trash cans is just this container here where we're going to put the hot water. So I'm going to put a little bit of hot water so when we cap it off and we drop it inside, then it will just help it start to expand. Now normally a soda bottle has about 180 pounds of pressure in it. Uh, that's just with the carbon dioxide. When you open up the first time, that's the greatest amount of pressure inside. You might have seen online where people are dropping Mentos inside and capping it real quickly and then dropping it. Well, it really is kind of silly. There's no science behind it at all. You're not adding carbon dioxide. You're just using the Mentos to get the carbon dioxide out. So it's the greatest amount of pressure that way. We're just going to pressurize it. So inside, if you could see, the bottle's just going to get bigger and bigger. And then two cool things will happen that I'll be able to show you right here. All right. Are you feeling good? Is everybody feeling good? Yes? All right. Make sure I have a cap. Make sure these are over here. If you do not like loud noises, you might want to cover your ears when we drop them down inside. Fair enough? So Jeff is going to put the hot water in each of those. 
That's just going to help the process. Good, you got it? OK, glasses, we all set? All right, bottles in hand. Now would be a good time for your phones if you want to record it. Ready? All right, ready, guys? Here we go. Let's cap it off. Cap tight. Make sure it's tight. Tight. Good, drop it in and stand back. So now it's growing inside. We don't know exactly when it's going to go, but you can kind of see that hot water inside that's getting bigger. <laughs> one, one more, one more. Ta da! Those were great. No, wait, 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 wait. Can I just show him how much fun this is? Look at that. This is what we found out. There was an implosion, not an explosion, correct? Inside, you had the explosion. But that fast-moving explosion created an area of low pressure on the outside. And what did we get? The can crush that we'd never seen before. We were just practicing wanting to make it a little bit noisy. For Are you OK, ma'am? Is everything good? OK, good. Security is here. All right, so good. Uh, so, 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 but we saw the implosion that we thought was kind of fun. Did you like it? Is that fun? Well, we noticed something. This was the very first one I remember for the Ellen Show about 2010. And if you notice, did you see the little cloud that came out? Well, that's pretty cool. So instead of just relying on the kaboom, what if the liquid nitrogen and the hot water were mixed together? I think that would make a pretty cool finale. Do you think so? I think that would be fantastic. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take these back, and I'm going to let you guys start to set. Would you please welcome back uh, Karen and Carly, who will help us out? If we take a look at the very last little piece here, and you take a look on the screen, we would love to connect. And so if you're taking pictures, if you'd like to take a picture afterwards, we would love to connect with you on social media. We'll continue to put our stuff out. We'll continue to put out more Six Science videos and get all that stuff ready. At the very end here, we'll be over here to be able to take uh, and say hello to you. Or we'll be over in the booth in 6300 at the very end with the Steve Spangler Science booth. Here's our setup, ladies and gentlemen. We need some stuff on, so let's put on our ponchos. Hey, uh, yeah, just a second. So here we go. All right. This is looking pretty good. Honey, do I look as good as I did in high school? All right. Not going to happen. Looking good. All right, so it looks like we had elephant's toothpaste, we had foam, and now it's time for a cloud. And let's do our last little bit of our liquid nitrogen here. All right, here we go. So. Now, the exact proportions are hard to tell, but this looks pretty good. How's it looking, Jeff? You doing great? Me too. This is looking good. And this is looking good as well. Now, is this going to be good, everybody? I think that's fine. Carly, how about a little bit more for you, all right? A little bit more for me. All right. We had a great time. Thanks for coming to the very first show in 2018 on the Einstein stage. You're going to see some wonderful demonstrators. So please uh, share your enthusiasm like you did with me. We had a blast doing this with you. Are you guys ready? All right, here we go. Someone's got to do this in slow-mo and post it. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Nice. Ta-da! How fun is that? Holy moly. The question is, do we have to clean up? And the answer is yes. Have a great time at the USA Science and Engineering Festival. Go SciFest!